and welcome to a taste of Old Colony history. For today's episode, we focus on a locally sourced recipe that uses some seasonal and local ingredients. Our recipe for our butternut squash bisque comes from Edible Southeastern Massachusetts Magazine, and our butternut squash that's going to be the star of this bisque actually came from a local supermarket, but it was grown in Hadley, Massachusetts. So not within the old colony, but not too far. Uh, these are things that could grow right in your backyard. Uh, so we are going to roast this up, mix it with a few other ingredients, and then make a warm, cozy bisque to enjoy this winter. Let's get cooking. Here are the tools and ingredients we'll need to make our butternut bisque. We need two and a half pounds of peeled butternut squash, two ounces of butter, a cup of heavy cream, three cups of vegetable stock, a tablespoon of sherry vinegar, some grated nutmeg, and salt and pepper to taste. For tools, you'll need a knife and a cutting board as well as a vegetable peeler for your squash. You'll need to put that in a roasting pan with some foil, and then we have some wet measuring cups and a measuring spoon as well. All right, so we're gonna get started on our first two steps for our butternut bisque. First, we're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Make sure there's nothing in there. Oh, wait, there is. <laughs> All right, so while our oven preheats, we're gonna set everything to the side, and we're gonna start working on our butternut squash. Now, if you're like me, normally you buy the lazy style butternut squash. I buy it pre-cut in chunks, and I use it in all kinds of ways from there. But this time, we're using what apparently is one of the world's largest butternut squashes. It's probably an exaggeration, but it's what the girl at the grocery store told me. Um, so we're gonna cut the ends off so it's a little more stable and easy to work with. And we're gonna start peeling and cutting it down. That wasn't too bad. First cut, easy. The other end's a bit bigger, so I'm gonna put my body weight behind it. All right, so we've got a stable, sturdy situation to work with. Um, these, great, throw in your compost, uh, you can save the seeds, use those uh, the same way you would pumpkin seeds. You can roast them down if you want to. So now we want to peel it. Uh, we're going to use a vegetable peeler and just go straight down, hopefully. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Everybody's saying that I lost my mind, but I So now I'm gonna cut this into quarters and then I'm gonna mix it with um, our nutmeg and salt and pepper and get it roasted. Uh, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so now cut this in half, a long way, and then cut it in half, short way. Okay, so now all I have to do is scrape uh, the remainder of the seeds out. So you do need a spoon for that. There's one. We're gonna do it with the other half, and then we'll get them into the roasting pan with some of those seasonings. 
We are now going to get our squash and seasonings into our roasting pan. I've got a pretty big one here because I have a pretty large squash that I'm working with. Um, you might not need one that's this large if you don't. Uh, but you do need two and a half pounds of squash for this recipe. Um, my squash that I purchased was five pounds, so I probably have too much, but uh, I'll probably save some of it and use it for something else. So um, you can roast up some squash and use it in a bunch of different ways. Uh, so to this, we are going to add a little bit of grated nutmeg and some salt and pepper. The one thing with this recipe is that it didn't really explain how to put all these ingredients together. Um, so kind of just going with the flow on that one. So I cut my squash up uh, into these four segments just to break it down a bit so that it would cook in the 45 minutes that it's supposed to. I didn't break it into tiny pieces because those probably would have cooked more quickly, um, but this is a pretty common way to roast a butternut squash. I already sprinkled some of my ground nutmeg on it. And now I'm gonna add um, four tablespoons of butter, which is two ounces. And I think I'm gonna break it into individual tablespoons and just kind of plop them around. And then once it melts, I'm gonna go back in and mix them together a little more. Um, so I'm gonna cut this in half first, and then I'll break this into little sections. So we're just gonna kinda go see how this goes. You can learn from my mistakes as always. So now I'm just gonna get some salt and pepper on there, do a little sprinkle. So we're going to cover this with foil and get it in the oven for 45 minutes. Pop it in, set our timer for 45. Like I said, we will check on this uh, probably in about 10 minutes. We'll give everything sort of a toss together to get those seasonings all throughout and the butter all on the squash as well. So the squash has been in the oven for just about 10 minutes. Like I said, I'm going to pop it out and toss around uh, butter and the seasonings and all that. Butter's starting to get nice and melty. I think I'm gonna turn these over a couple times just to kind of blend some things together. Seasonings, salt and pepper. Use my little baster just to get, make sure it's on the ends. So there's butter all over these surfaces. And then I'm gonna turn them back flat side um, to continue cooking. And I'm going to go back in the oven and cook until it's all nice and tender. All right, so our squash has about 14 minutes left in the oven. So now we're going to start getting our liquids warmed up uh, that will help make this base. So we need one cup of heavy cream. This was one tool I forgot to mention, you do need a big um, sauce pot. And we're gonna do this over medium heat. And we also need three cups of vegetable stock. And we're just let these get nice and warmed up. Give it a stir every couple minutes, but this part's pretty hands off. I'm gonna cover it, just to help it stay warm. We'll check on those in just a minute. All right, so our stock and cream is all nice and warm. Give it a little whisk. Our oven timer just went off. Our squash should be ready. There it is again. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna do a fork test just to make sure it's nice and tender. I've reduced um, my stock and cream to low. Pull this out. Check it out. Ooh, it's buttery. It's hard. <laughs> rock hard. So remember, I said earlier, you're going to learn from my mistakes. Um, this squash and the size that I had it is still pretty hard. So I am going to break this into smaller sections. It's been in there a while now, so I don't need to cut it into tiny pieces. The inner part is pretty, it's getting soft. So it, it's getting there. When you do yours, Break it down more. So here's my plan. To begin with, my squash was five pounds, um, which we scooped some seeds out and things like that, but it 
really most of it is in this pan right now. So I'm gonna reserve this guy. I'll probably cook him up um, later, just after uh, this, because I can't really fit any more in this pan. Some of them are a little bit thicker than others, uh, but should be okay. I'm gonna put it back in the oven. Um, I'm gonna give it 15 minutes and check on them. I'll give you an update when it's finally ready to blend. Pull out that squash and check it again. Not cooked down much more than it really was, so I'm gonna put it in for another 20. Hopefully that'll do it. We're gonna check this again. Nice and steamy in there. Oh yeah. Perfectly fork tender, goes right through. All right, so now this is still warm. Um, I'm gonna turn it back to low just for a sec. Yeah, that's still warm. So um, I'm gonna get all the squash into this pot. Actually don't need the heat. I do want to make sure we get butter and seasonings from our roasting pan. All that nice salt and pepper, nutmeg in there. All right, so now get this all submerged. And the next step is to puree it. Uh, so I'm gonna use an immersion blender. You can use a regular blender, a food processor, uh, whatever you have for tools, uh, but something that is going to blend this down uh, really well. We want it to be smooth and creamy. tablespoon of sherry vinegar to this. Um, it's gonna give it a little uh, more depth because um, right now it's very creamy and buttery. Uh, I do want to give it a little taste just like this. Mm. This tastes like Thanksgiving to me. <laughs> That's really good just like that, but I am gonna add in that sherry vinegar because that's what the recipe calls for. And I know it's gonna add a little, like I said, that nice depth, um, give it a little acidity. Package open, there we go. I need my tablespoon. Get that nicely mixed in. I'm gonna taste test with a fresh spoon. Uh, because you can add more salt and pepper or anything that your palate thinks that this needs. It's pretty customizable. Um, if you want to add different seasonings, you could, um, different toppings for it. The vinegar blended in nicely. It's not like there's no vinegar punch. <laughs> it got really mellowed out the cream and the vegetable stock and the squash itself. That's really tasty. Um, I'm gonna get a little bowl, <laughs> top it with some cream to do it right. The recipe does say to serve this immediately and to top it with a little swirl of cream. So I'm gonna pour that onto my spoon and then sort of swirl it around. There's our swirled cream there. This is delicious. <laughs> it's really simple, but it's rich and warm. On a gloomy day like today outside, this is exactly what you want. Um, I probably could have pureed it a little bit more. It has a couple little bits in it, so I might uh, hit it with the blender again, just to get it really smooth, but it has great texture. Um, I, don't, I don't mind that it has a little bit of like bits in it because <laughs> they're teeny. Um, there's no big chunks or anything. This is pretty smooth already. Oh, there was junk. 
Yeah, <laughs> so like I said, I'll probably go um, with my blender again. There are some pieces in there. Uh, but overall, this was very simple other than peeling my butternut squash. So you could save yourself a step and buy the pre-cut kind. Uh, and then this would come together really quickly. Um, learned my lesson with the roasting. <laughs> Smaller pieces. It went a lot more quickly. Uh, they became tender after that additional 20 minutes. So we did the 45 on the big pieces. 15 and then another 20 so it ended up being a pretty long time um, But if you had started with smaller pieces to begin with you wouldn't have that problem <laughs> uh, So like I said learn from my mistakes, but enjoy some of this delicious local butternut bisque enjoy